the storm that battered Auckland last night has left a trail of destruction across the city and other parts of the North Island. We will be there too. But in Auckland, the storm downed trees, damaged homes and left an unprecedented number of people without power. Schools and kindergartens left without power were forced to close for the day and some businesses who couldn't access generators were forced to shut up shop. Debris on the runway at Auckland Airport also forced flights to be diverted. Some of those people are still in Christchurch and will be there soon. In a moment, we'll have the latest on the outages from Vector's head of networks. But first First, Zach Fleming and cameraman Nick Monroe on the streets of Auckland with residents, some of whom had a very lucky escape. Usually an unfamiliar sound in the central city. But this morning it's what many Aucklanders woke up to. Tree mulches were kept extremely busy with hundreds of trees brought down overnight, crushing cars and homes. This Papatoetoe homeowner could only get arborists to secure the tree that fell onto his house. They were too busy to completely remove it. It happens, you know. Winds regularly topped 120 kilometres an hour, with one gust recorded at 213 kilometres an hour. Nearly at the level of a Category 4 cyclone. But it was people on the ground most impacted, with power lines felled by trees across the city. I heard something behind me, like something rumbling, <laughs> um, and I, I felt it coming towards us. And then it was just literally, it felt like it crashed against the house, and a, a big sort of white light just it felt like, like an explosion. Vasanti Bana was hunkered down inside her Onehanga home watching television around 9.30pm when this massive tree, at least 50 metres tall, narrowly missed her home, but littered her property with live power lines. We were all shaken up. My sister was just in the um, passage and she, you know, was pretty shaken up as well. So. And it, it, the power just went out, everything just, the lights went out. These power lines were actually brought down by a tree from across the road. And yeah, having no power is a nuisance, but this could have been much worse. If this tree had have fallen the other way, it would have crushed a house. And more luck, Visanti woke to power and a hot shower. Her electricity comes from the road perpendicular. But more than 120,000 homes and businesses, close to a quarter of Auckland's residents, weren't so lucky. They woke this morning with no electricity, which caused chaos on the roads with traffic lights down across the region. NZTA used the large signs on State Highway 1 to warn motorists, and police were deployed to major intersections to direct traffic. Many businesses were forced to close for the day, even Housing New Zealand and Mount Roskill couldn't open though some shop owners got creative and used torches to show customers around, providing they could pay cash. Others were quick and nabbed a generator. Kanwal Sandu filled his ice cream fridges with nearly $1,000 worth of stock yesterday and couldn't afford for it to melt. I came here at 6 o'clock and found uh, no power. In fact, the alarm was going. The generator is hired for nearly $100 a day, so I want to keep my ice cream safe. Vector says it has 100 crews out across Auckland trying to get power restored as quickly as possible. But it could take days to get the estimated 100,000 homes and businesses still black back on the grid. And after that comes a likely large bill for insurers. For Checkpoint, Zach Fleming.